Well, hello, thank you for joining me today again on the Church History Trail. And we're actually in Cumber, County Down. And as you can hear, the uh, bell is sounding because uh, we're actually at St. Mary's Parish Church, as you can see. And just there is the uh, square, which also has uh, a lot of uh, different um, memorials for the history of people from Cumber. But who you have here is actually Desi. And Desi's a local historian in Cumber here. And Desi, what do we have uh, here? What's this uh, writing then on the pillar? Well, hello, hello folks. Um, what we have here is a, a pillar from 1774. And we have the names on it of uh, two men who were church wardens of St. Mary's back then. Uh -huh. uh, we have a Thomas Andrews, and you may have heard of the Andrews family of Cumber. Yes. He's an early member. Uh, and James Lamont. And these men uh, are said to have uh, actually paid for the erection of these pillars. Um, what I should say as well, uh, we're actually on the site here of an ancient abbey, uh -huh. which uh, goes back to 1199. That's incredible. And uh, during the, the Middle Ages, uh, you would have had Cistercian monks here. Uh, Cistercian monks who wore white, uh -huh. uh, and they were known as the white monks. Where's the abbey gone? Uh, 1543, it was closed down at the time of uh, Henry VIII. And uh, later on, it was burnt down by the Irish themselves because uh, there were s people came over from England and they were wanting to settle the country. The Irish didn't want their trips to have any shelter, so they burnt down yes. abbeys and various places. And then the Scots settlers came over in the early 17th century under Hugh Montgomery and James Hamilton. They built a church here on this site, not the present St Mary's, but uh, they used the stones from the abbey uh -huh. to build the church and they also used the stones to build uh, houses for That's themselves. That's incredible. So it is fantastic. So the abbey has disappeared although you you can still see some abbey stones in the walls and buildings around Cumber today. Well, I'll give you the viewers a wee closer look at that then. So what does that say there then, Desi? It says Thomas Andrews, James Lamont, Church Wardens, 1774. And, Thomas... and apparently that Thomas Andrews eventually ended up in Jamaica, where he ended his days as a very wealthy man. And he was related, did you say, to the Titanic man? He, he, was, he was part of that family, yes. That's incredible not a direct ancestor uh -huh. of Thomas, but he would have been in the same family. That's incredible. Well, we'll, we'll go ahead and have a wee look and see what we have here then. Okay. That's great. So what's this then, Desi? Right. This is the Andrews Mausoleum, which was erected in 1867 by a man called William Glenny Andrews. Um, no burials inside it. It's actually over the family grave of the Andrews family. Uh -huh. What we do have inside it, though, are a couple of cremations. Yes. And one of them is a lady called Elizabeth Law Barber Andrews, uh, known as Elba for short, after the initials of her name. Makes it a bit easier to say. <laughs> um, and uh, 
her ashes are inside. She was the she was the daughter of Thomas Andrews, the shipbuilder, and unfortunately, she was killed in a car crash huh, in goodness. 1973. But on the sides of the uh, the mausoleum, you have the names of the people who are buried down below, um, both over here and. Well, we'll have a wee well. look at this one then, Desi. Yeah. Um, the, the earliest name, uh, I think it's actually in the other memorial, uh -huh. uh, is a man called Thomas Andrews the, the Miller, uh -huh. who was born in 1698. And uh, he started up the Andrews milling business. Um, but it was his son, John, who really brought Cumber alive industrially in the 18th century. And he has been given the name of John the Great because of what he did. Fantastic. He, he transformed uh, what Walter Harris had called a, um, a poor little village or something like that. And he, he transformed it. He built a... a he had a bleach green, linen mills, uh, all sorts of things. Uh, a, a big flour mill, which he built in 1771. Um, he was involved in quarrying. Uh, in, uh, e even, even the whiskey business <laughs> he got involved in for a short he time. Is, he had his hand on everything. Uh, well, he had so many enterprises that he had to give some of them up. And, yes. Uh, he got out of the whiskey in 1788. Well, that's, I'm gonna... that's not to say he didn't <laughs> keep on drinking it. Well, I'm going to uh, pick your brain, um, Desi, yeah. because you mentioned Alba Barber, and you mentioned the bleach greens and the linens. Would she have been a connection to the Barber threads of Hilden, do you know? Yes. Yes, that's what I thought. Uh -huh. When I read well, your article, that's was, what I thought. She was, she was Alba Andrews. Yes. Uh, her mother would have been a barber. Yes, that's what I thought. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so there was another wee m monument then you want to show us here at the, at the church? Yes. And I have what? to say, Desi, Cumber is a very small village, but it certainly packs a a big history, doesn't it? There's a lot of history. There's no about doubt about it. it like. Yeah. Now this uh, this stone here was originally an old, badly worn, flaked stone, uh, and somebody in more recent times decided that they would uh, recarve the stone. Very good. So what you have here is a monument to one of uh, uh, Cumber's former rectors. Near this place lieth the body of ye Reverend Mr. Edmund Bennett, ye late learned and pious minister of this congregation, and chaplain to the Earl of Mount Alexander. He died on the 15th of February, 1710, 11, very much lamented. Is and it 1710, 11 there, does he? What's that about? Yes, if I could just explain that. Um, at one time, the new year started on the 25th of March rather than the 1st of January. Oh, yes. So it depends which starting date you take for the year. <laughs> if you started at the 1st of January, you're into 1711. <laughs> but if it starts on the 25th of March, you're still in 1710. <laughs> That's incredible, isn't it? The chaplain to the Earl of Mount Alexander. Oh, that's incredible itself, eh? Um, Isn't it? Mount Alexander is actually one of Cumber's town lands. Um, what happened was Hugh Montgomery, one of the original Scots settlers, uh, when his son got married in 1622, he built a uh, Mount Alexander Castle uh -huh. in Cumber. Um, now, the reason it was called Mount Alexander Castle, the 
the bride was called Jean Alexander. Uh -huh. And she was actually the daughter of the Secretary of State for Scotland. Oh, you're joking. So, I mean, you're moving in... in High in circles high, here? High circles, exactly. Definitely. Um, their son uh, fought on the side of Charles I in the Civil Wars. You're joking. Um, and what was his name? Do you know? He was... The, the, they, were, they were all called Hugh. Hugh? Hugh Montgomery. So Hugh, um, his son Hugh then fought in the Civil Wars? I, that is fantastic. Have, one of the... Well, whenever I say the Civil Wars, the, the Civil War in, in Ireland... Yes. Um, he, he fought, for instance, at the Battle of Ben Burb in 1646. My goodness. Um, and he was captured there. And but of course, there was a there was a battle fought near Lisburn, uh, near mm -hmm. Saintfield, which was a Civil War battle, but I forget the... Is it Listen Strain? Listen Strain, I've heard that I name. I think it is Listen yes, Strain. I Don't quote me right. on that, but I think it is. I think you're right. And that was a, an English Civil War mm -hmm. battle that was fought over here. Yeah. And what were you going to say there, Desi? But when Desi? we talk about the Earl of Mount Alexander, uh -huh. uh, this uh, chap Hugh, uh, who was the third Viscount Montgomery, he uh, um, in in sixteen sixty Charles the Second came was restored to the throne, and he made Hugh the first Earl of Mount Alexander. Yes. And that line of the Earls of Mount Alexander continued through to 1757, whenever the, the line died out. Um, uh, I done a wee video at... Um, now, I didn't know about this place until recently, and I have to say it's a fantastic castle, uh, Killalay Castle. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, it's the... Uh, I think it's the Montgomerys who owned that land and there's actually still a Montgomery if I remember rightly I think it's Montgomery who is still in uh, lives in the castle a descendant I think that might have been the Hamiltons the Hamiltons sorry it wasn't Montgomery yes. it was the Hamiltons you're right mm -hmm. and there's still a Hamilton it was because uh, yes you're absolutely right because uh, the, the 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 there's a family member descendant mm -hmm. unbelievable that actually still lives in that castle. Yeah. That is incredible. Uh -huh. And it was the Hamiltons, you're right. You're uh -huh. right, I got mixed yeah. up there. Yeah. But that, so that's fantastic as well. Like, you know, the history here is absolutely mm -hmm. uh, brilliant. And then there's another man here, and uh, yeah. you have a joke that he's 127 years of age, well, Desi. You'll have to see him. We'll have one. to see him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's him here, is it? This is it. Um, <laughs> I, I don't know where this uh, this headstone was originally, but it has been brought and uh, placed on the the wall of the, the church here. Yes. It says, Here lies the body of Isaac Meredith of Kilbrecht, who departed this life the 10th day of July, 1723. And then we get it. Aged 127 years. <laughs> now, I leave you to make up your own mind whether you believe that or not, or whether somebody has maybe inserted an extra one in in front of the two. So maybe the poor man was only 27 when he died. I think you're right, Desi. Now, <laughs> I told you about, uh, I think it was William Smith. He was born in 1801, and he it's recorded that he lived to 125 yeah. by the Northern Whig. And also uh, on his birthday, uh, King George V actually sent him three pound. Yes. But if you look at that, certainly mm -hmm. the one's lower than the two and the seven. I think so. So I think, uh, I think somebody maybe coming home from the tavern has put that uh, one on there. <laughs> very, very possibly. <laughs> well, Desi, thanks very much. And I'll just give them a wee view here of the... Uh, of the monument and stay tuned folks because uh we're not finished here in st mary's and desi's going to show us show us a wee bit more of the history god bless